What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodeMe.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to automatically resize your background image with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at resizing the background image automatically. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, it is Thanksgiving here in America. If you're celebrating, you know, happy Thanksgiving. If you're not, happy Thursday. <laughs> so in this video, we're going to look at automatically resizing your background image. Now, in the last video, I showed you how to create a background image, right? But if you change the size of your app, drag the corner around like this, the image didn't resize automatically. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. So I've got the same exact code from our last video. If you didn't see that, check the comment section below for a link to the playlist. I've just renamed the file image underscore BG underscore resize. It used to be image underscore BG. And like I said, it's the same starter code that we looked at in the last video. Now, in the last video, I showed you two methods for adding a background image, the place method that we've commented out and the canvas method. In this video, we're just going to focus on the canvas me method because honestly, that's probably the more important method. The place method that we looked at in the last video has some pretty big drawbacks. Uh, specifically, anything you put on top of it can't be transparent. So if you put a label on top of it, the, the background color of the label is going to show up over the image. And that's probably not what you want. So you're almost always going to use your canvas. So I'm just going to show you how to resize your image with canvas. Now, right away, we need to make some changes. And before we do that, let's just take a quick look at this. So let's go Python underscore image underscore BG underscore resize. And when we do, we get this thing here. Now, if I grab this, you can see the image just stays the way the image is, right? So obviously, this is not a great solution if you want to have your app to be able to be resized. So Okay, so right off the bat, we need to make a few changes. In the last video, we used photo image just to pull in our PNG. Now, that's fine if you're going to use PNG, but a lot of people are going to use JPEGs or other types of image formats. And so you're almost always going to want to use PIL, Pillow, the Python image library. And we've used PIL, Pillow in, in the past in a lot of videos in the playlist. So you can check back for that. We need to resize the image. And to resize an image with Kinter, you have to use Pillow. So we're going to come up here and we're going to go from PIL, that's capital P, capital I, capital L. We want to import uh, image TK and image. Now, this is a capital I and a capital T. This is not a capital K. A lot of times I see people accidentally put a capital K here and you'll get an error if you do that. Likewise, this is a capital I. So this does not come with uh, Python or Kinter. We have to actually install this. So head back over here and go pip install pillow. Now it's capital P I L L O W. Now I know we just imported P I L. Why aren't we pip installing P I L? Pillow is an update to the P I L. It's a, to, it's a fork of pill and it's a more current, but this should be good. Now I should mention right off the bat, I see all the time students have trouble using pillow. I don't know why some computers just have trouble with it. Um, if you do, if you get an error while using Pillow, you're just going to have to kind of Google it. There's nothing I can really do to help you with that. Uh, I'd say like 10 or 15% of all the students that watch videos that I have on Pillow contact me and they're like, I'm getting an error with Pillow. What's going on? It's just your computer. Maybe it's your graphic card in your computer. I'm not really sure. But a lot of times if you get an error, if you get an error with Pillow, you can Google the error and sort of uh, figure out how to fix it. So. Uh, unfortunately, that's all I can really say about that. So now a few videos back, we looked at how to resize things using a event binding. So we went root dot bind and then we passed in configure. And when we do this, anytime you change the size of your app, it'll it'll pass in the dimensions, the height and width into whatever function you call. So let's call the resize resizer function, right? So we obviously don't have a resizer function yet. So we can come up here and create one. And just underneath this where I've commented out all the other stuff, let's go define resizer. And this is a function. Now we're passing an event into this. So we need to put an E here. And now this will allow us to get E dot width 
and e dot height of our app at any given moment, right? So that's really cool. Since we can get the height and width of the current app, all we need to do now is resize our image to whatever that height and width is. And I have videos in the playlist on resizing images with Pillow. So if you need a refresher on that, you can go watch that video, but I'm gonna walk you through it here anyway. So you don't necessarily need to do that. So right now let's, let's open our image, right? So up here, we did it like this and that's fine. You can keep it like that. But since we're using pillow anyway, let's sort of switch from regular photo image to image TK dot photo image, right? And that's this thing we in installed right here. Image TK dot photo image will allow you to use different types of images. So you can use JPEGs, you can use, you know, PNGs, you can use anything you want. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so we don't we don't necessarily have to do that, but we can. So let's come down here. Now let's open our image. So uh, I'm going to create a new variable instead of BG, I'm going to call this BG one, right? So now what do we want to do? We want to open our image. So let's go image dot open. And what do we want to open? We want to open whatever this thing was. So I'm just going to copy this, bring it down here. And let's just open that. Okay, so now that it's open, we want to resize it. Right? So I'm gonna call this resized underscore uh, BG. And that's just gonna be BG one dot resize. And we can pass in the width and the height that we want. But it's not just width and height, it's gonna be E dot width and E dot height. And we're getting that from right here, which ultimately we're getting from this thing, right? we're passing the event of the app being resized. And when we do, it passes a height and a width as a e dot width and an e dot height. We looked at this two or three videos ago. If you didn't see that, check the playlist. Uh, there's a link in the comment section below. You can re you can learn all about this configure thing. So, okay, we're getting the, the width and the height here, but we also need to, to do one more thing. We need to pass an image dot anti alias. That's A-N-T-I-A-L-I-A-S. And this just makes sure that uh, there's no little fuzzly, bumply things along the image as it resizes, right? It stays crisp, basically. So, okay, that's good. So now we've got this thing resized. Now we need to just do something with it. So just like up here where we just like defined this thing, we need to kind of do that again. So. Let's define our image again. And so I'm going to call this new BG to sort of keep it separate in my mind from BG up here, right? So our new BG is going to be an image TK dot photo image. And what image is it going to be? It's going to be this image that we just resized, right? So instead of passing file equals and then a, a path to the file, we can just pass in the actual image itself, just like that. And that of course is this resize thing that we just resized to be whatever height and width our current app is, right? Okay, so that's good. Now we need to add it back to the canvas. Because remember when we first started this thing, we set the image right here. When we set the image in the canvas, we said my canvas dot create image. And then we gave it an anchor and did all the things, set it at zero, zero. We need to redo that again. So let's come down here and we could just sort of paste that in here. Now you would think this would work. And if we save this and run it, it's not gonna. So let's give this a try. Here it is. And right off the bat, you notice our welcome text is gone. We'll talk about that in a second. Now, if we grab this, it doesn't actually do anything. And we don't even get an error. Why is that? Well, the funny thing about Kinter and images and functions, there's yeah, Kinter has a garbage collection thing that sort of sweeps up images in functions and it thinks it's garbage and it just gets rid of it. So to make sure that doesn't happen, we need to set all of these things up as global variables. So let's go global. And this is BG1, resized BG, 
And for good measure, let's go new underscore BG. One thing I missed, this image right here should be new BG instead of just BG. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this, run this guy, pull it on over. And now, here we go. It works just fine. Now, you'll notice that there's no text here, right? Normally it should say welcome. And if we come back up here and look, you'll see when we first defined this thing, we created a canvas, we stuck the image on there, then we put the text on top of it, right? Well, now we're, we're putting a new image up, but we just, we need to re-add the text, right? So kind of goofy. We don't have to do this for the buttons, but we do have to do it for the text because they're a little, a little bit different. We can save this and run it. And now it says welcome there and we can resize this. Now you'll notice that the buttons and the text aren't resizing in proportion. We're not gonna look at that in this video. I've showed you how to resize widgets in other videos, so hopefully you can figure this out. If a lot of people just can't figure it out, I'll do a video on that too, just let me know in the comment section. But uh, for now, we just wanna focus in this video on this background image, and uh, that looks pretty good and uh, yeah, pretty simple. So just remember, we're passing our configure thing into our resizer function. The configure will pass a height and width that we can access by this E, so E.width and E.height. And here, we're just resizing an image in the same exact normal way we resize any image with Kinter, right? Like I said, I've got a video on that in the playlist. Check it out if you haven't seen it. And it's, I don't know, video 77, 75, somewhere around there, I seem to think. Uh, but you can look through the uh, playlist and find that. And we're just opening the image, resizing it, putting it back up on the screen, adding that to the canvas. And uh, that's really all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off memberships. They pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.